Hi everyone, I'm Mary, one of your friendly PCC librarians. In this workshop, we'll be discussing citing sources using APA 7th edition. By the end of this video, we will learn why citing sources is important, when to cite, what is APA, how to create what are called APA in-text citations, how to create APA references in an APA references page, and how to format a research paper according to APA guidelines. Okay, let's jump in. Let's first take a look at why citing sources is important. One reason is that citations give credit to the original author. Doing so means you are attributing existing research to its creator. This helps in avoiding plagiarism, which is when you pass off a borrowed idea as one of your own. Another reason is that citations allow readers to look up the source on their own. For example, if you write a research paper with citations provided, then that means someone else reading your paper has enough information to look up those resources on their own. Okay, so when is citing used? Citations should be used when you are quoting. Quoting is when you borrow an exact quote from someone else's work word for word. For example, let's say we're reading this passage here from an article and we want to borrow this sentence here that reads, motivation of students from lower SES backgrounds can be influenced. Since we are borrowing the phrase word for word and using it in a research paper, that means we are quoting. Quoting requires citing the source of where you borrowed the quote from. Citations should also be used when you are paraphrasing. Paraphrasing is when you take someone else's work and put it into your own words. Even though you aren't quoting something word for word, it is still borrowing someone else's idea. Therefore, it needs a citation. Let's take a look at that same passage again as an example. And let's say this time you want to borrow the whole paragraph and then rewrite it into your own words. Again, even though you aren't quoting something word for word, it is still borrowing someone else's idea. Paraphrasing requires citing the source of where you borrowed the idea from. Citation should also be used when you are summarizing. Summarizing is when you take someone else's work, put it into your own words, and condense it into a summary. Similar to paraphrasing, even though you are not quoting a source word for word, it is still borrowing someone else's idea. Therefore, it needs a citation for where it came from. Let's take a look at that same excerpt again as an example. And let's say this time you want to borrow the whole paragraph, rewrite it into your own words, and condense the idea into a much smaller statement. Again, similar to paraphrasing, even though you aren't quoting something word for word, it is still borrowing someone else's idea. Therefore, summarizing requires citing the source of where you borrowed the idea from. Okay, now that we've discussed citing sources in general, let's take a look at citing sources following APA specifically. So, what is APA? APA stands for the American Psychological Association. The APA is a professional organization of psychologists. It's a large group. They have over 120,000 members across the US. The APA does things like research, write policy, and publish journals in the field of psychology. One thing they do in particular is oversee what's called APA style. APA style is a style of writing. This style of writing follows a set of rules for how to write and format research papers. So if you have a class where you've been asked to write a research paper in APA style, now we understand that that means to write and format your paper according to the rules created by the APA. Okay. So far we've discussed why and when to use citations and what APA style is. So now let's take a look at how to create citations following APA style. We'll start with creating what are called in-text citations. So what are in-text citations? In-text citations are used throughout your paper. 
They are like brief, abbreviated pieces of information sprinkled throughout your paper. The information in an in-text citation indicates where you are borrowing a quote or idea from. That way, someone reading your paper knows where an idea came from as they're reading your paper. Here's an example of part of a research article written in APA style. Let's take a look at some of the in-text citations. Here's one example that reads Destin and Oysterman 2010. We are able to tell where the in-text citations are by looking for a formatting pattern of an author's last name, a comma, and a year, and it's wrapped in parentheses. In this case, Destin and Oysterman are the authors, and 2010 is the year for this resource. Here is another in-text citation, Destin, 2017. Again, in this case, Destin is the author, and 2017 is the year for this particular resource. And here is one more. In this in-text citation, we can see that this resource has several authors. They are Broman, Destin, Carswell, and Sabota. And here's the comma and the year. And it's wrapped in parentheses. So let's break these down a bit. As mentioned with the previous slide, there is an author's last name and a year, and it's all wrapped within parentheses. Now, there's actually one more detail to consider when writing these. Remember when we reviewed quoting, paraphrasing, and summarizing? Well, these will further determine how to format your in-text citation. This means that if you are paraphrasing or summarizing, then you will include the last name, the comma, and the year, similar to the examples that we've reviewed so far. Now, if you are quoting, then you will include the last name, the year, plus the page number that you borrowed the quote from, all wrapped in parentheses. So be sure to take mental note of whether you are quoting, paraphrasing, or summarizing as you write your paper. This will help you to, to, to determine which of these in-text citation formats to follow. Let's take a closer look at a few more examples. Here's an example of using paraphrasing or summarizing. This sentence here, a series of studies has investigated, so on and so forth, is either a paraphrase or a summary. Therefore, the in-text citation includes the author's last names and the year, and wrapped in parentheses. Here's an example of using quoting. This sentence here has a direct quote that starts with quotation marks, and it reads, socioeconomic background, their identity, and their achievement of academic and career goals, end quote. Therefore, since this is a quote, the in-text citation includes the author's last name, the year, and this time, the page number for where the exact quote came from. Here is one more example of using quoting. This is an example of how you can get creative and incorporate an in-text citation into your writing. Notice that, that, that this reads according to Destin, which is the writer's way of working the author's name directly into the sentence. This is followed by the in-text citation, but since the author's last name was already mentioned, there's no need to include it again in the in-text citation. So the in-text citation is made up of just the year within the parentheses. You may be thinking, but what about the page number? Well, when incorporating in-text citations into your writing in this way, the year in parentheses follows the author's last name and the page number in parentheses is placed at the very end of the sentence followed by a period as shown here. Note that this technique of incorporating in-text citations into your sentences is an option for you as you explore your personal writing style. But if you prefer to use the basic in-text citation formatting shown in previous examples, that's okay too. APA style allows for both. 
Okay, so we've reviewed how to create in-text citations. Now let's review how to create what are called references, as well as how to create a references page following APA style. So what are references? References contain information about the resources you use throughout your paper. Similar to in-text citations, they tell readers where you are borrowing a quote or idea from, but references have much more information in them than the in-text citations. Also, references are listed at the end of your paper on a separate page called the references page. A references page includes a list of all the resources you used, all in one place. Here's an example of the references section of a research paper written in APA style. It is made up of a number of references, such as this one that starts with Archer, this one that starts with Ouster, another one that starts with Becker, and so on and so forth. We are able to tell where each reference is by looking for a formatting pattern of the author's last name and initial, last name initial, year, title, and then other information ranging from names of journals, page ranges, and URLs, pieces of which we'll take a closer look at in just a moment. So how do we create these individual references? The first step is to identify what type of resource you are using. In other words, identify whether what you are citing is, say, a book, an ebook, a journal article, a news article, a website, or even a movie, a podcast, or a tweet. The next step is to select an APA reference format that matches the type of resource you just identified. In other words, if you are citing a book, then you will need to follow the book reference format. If you are citing an article, then you will need to follow the article reference format. APA style has reference format examples for all kinds of things, including movies, podcasts, and even social media. For this video, we'll be reviewing three commonly used reference formats as, a, as examples, including an ebook, an article from a library database, and then a website. So let's start with an ebook. Here is the APA reference format used for ebooks. Notice that it begins with an author's last name, followed by a first initial, middle initial, year, title of the book, subtitle, edition information, publisher, and the DOI. These are each the pieces of information about the ebook that you will need to gather and then plug into the format following the same order and punctuation. Here is an example of an ebook reference with the pieces plugged in. As you can see, it includes the author's last name, their first and middle initials, the year, the title, the edition, the publisher, and the DOI. Note that when creating a reference, you should gather as many of the elements as you can, and if there is no information provided for a certain element, that's okay. Not all resources you cite will have each of the elements, so plug in the pieces that are available to you and skip the ones where no information is given. Here is one more example of an ebook citation with the pieces plugged in. As you can see, it includes the author's last name, their first and middle initials, the year, the title, and the publisher. This particular ebook doesn't have an edition or DOI, so those elements were skipped. Now let's look at the article reference format. It will be slightly different than the ebook format. It includes the author's last name, first initial, middle initial, the year, the title of the article, its subtitle, the name of the journal, the volume and issue number, the page numbers, and the DOI. Again, gather as many of the elements as you can, and if there is no information provided for a certain element, that's okay. 
here's an example of an article reference with the pieces plugged in. As you can see, it includes an author's last name, first initial, year, title, and subtitle, the journal that it came from, the volume and issue numbers, the page range, and finally the DOI. Here's an example of the website reference format. A website reference has slightly different elements than the ebook and article examples we reviewed. These elements include the author's last name, first initial, middle initial, a full date, including year, month, and day, the title of the web page, the name of the website if different from the author name, and the web address. Again, gather as many of the elements as you can, and if there's no information provided for a certain element, that's okay. Here's an example of a website reference with the pieces plugged in. Notice that it begins with the name of an organization, Pasadena Museum of History, rather than a person. Organizations can be authors too, in which case there is no last name, first initial, but just the name of the organization itself. So in this example, the reference includes the name of the author, which happens to be an organization and not a person, the full date, the name of the web page, and the web address. Okay, so we've reviewed how to create APA references. Now let's put them together into a references page. A references page should begin on a brand new page separate from the rest of your research paper. The page should be labeled references and centered at the top of the page as shown here. Each of your references will be listed on this page and placed in alphabetical order according to the first word of the reference. On this page, I've pasted the three references we reviewed for the ebook and journal article examples. Notice that they are listed alphabetically. So, the first one is DeCampley, which comes before J for Jackson, which comes before Sapolsky. The references page also uses what's called hanging indentation. This means that each reference begins flush to the left, and then each subsequent line is indented slightly to the right. Using hanging indents indicates to readers that each time a line of text is all the way to the left, that's the beginning of a new reference. And finally, the text on this page should be double-spaced. Okay, let's review how to format the rest of your paper according to APA style. APA style calls for what's called a student title page. An APA student title page includes the page number, the title of your paper, your name, your college's name, the course and instructor, and the date. Here's a sample title page. As you can see, it includes the page number, which is in the top right corner, the title of the research paper, centered and bold, and after a few lines, it includes your name, the name of your college, your course, your professor's name, and the date. Let's review a few more formatting requirements for your paper. You should use one of the APA style's recommended fonts, which include 11-point Calibri, 11-point Arial, or 12-point Times New Roman. Whichever one you choose, it's important to use the same one throughout your whole paper. Your paper should be double-spaced. Use one-inch one margins on each side of your paper and indent the first line of each new paragraph by using the tab key on the keyboard. Okay, last but not least, let's review a few resources for APA style should you want to learn more. First is PCC Library's APA Quick Guide. This is a brief two-page guide with common reference formats and examples. Also helpful is the actual APA website. The APA has examples of reference formats, in-text citations, 
how to format your paper, and even sample research papers written in APA style. And there is the Excelsior OWL APA style website which also has helpful examples of reference formats, sample papers, and more. And remember, PCC Library is here to help. On the library homepage are helpful resources to help with your research, including the Citing Sources button, which has additional citation resources. Also on the library homepage is the Ask a Librarian button, which takes users to all the different ways to get assistance from PCC Library, including chat, email, and even video conferencing. Thanks for watching.